All right. Welcome, everyone, to uh, the first webinar I've done in 2022. Uh, first webinar for a while. And I'm joined once again uh, by Dominic Scafidi. Um, as I have uh, just said before we started recording, Dominic's the first person that I'm, I'm doing a webinar with for the third time. Um, and no one, no one else has, has made it to three times. So um, I don't know what that means, but it's just an interesting <laughs> observation. Um, we, we obviously like, uh, we like doing this. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, we haven't pre-prepared statements or anything, and, and I prefer it that way. I think it can be a little bit bland when people go, well, uh, this is uh, Dominic Scafidi, and then they read out a long, a long thing. So um, I, don't, I don't pretend to know everything, but Dominic, what I do know about you, and we've been interacting for, for you know, a number of years now, um, although I think we've only met in person once. Um, right, yeah. Is, it, it, and one thing I find really interesting about you is that you you kind of um, cross numerous kind of communities. Um, so you you're obviously very proficient as a coach. You're uh, very highly qualified and trained and recognised within the International Coaching Federation. And I know you're a big proponent of um, you know coaches um, you know going down the ICF route. I haven't got any ICF accreditation, but anyway, <laughs> um, I know you're a big proponent of that. Um, so, so, so you're, you know, and, and, and I know you're doing work in kind of, you know, leading the charge on that and, and encouraging people to go down that road. And I know people who have, have, have benefited and I've seen lots of, you know, praise coming from the work you do there. Separate to that, you do a lot of business coaching and I know you've won awards for that. Um, and that's kind of a whole separate kind of, area and, and we've discussed that um, you've got a background in kind of being involved in law of attraction and, and Abraham uh, Hicks uh, Esther Hicks and, and and that sort of stuff you're really involved in the three principles community and and uh, I know you did super coach a few years ago many years ago now probably you really have you know got this great breadth of knowledge um and um and probably part of the reason why we're doing a third webinar all of them have been slightly different um and one thing i really really admire about you is that whenever i interact with you or i see you interacting on on social media is that the, the there's a humbleness and it's not like a fake humbleness um you know it, you you've really genuinely from certainly my impression is that you you've got a thirst for knowledge a thirst for learning you the communities i see you interacting with um you know apart from the humor that you you demonstrate it, it it's also you're genuinely curious you're genuinely interested um i see you on webinars you know all the time as a you know participant so um, yeah, I'm excited to have you here and, um, you know, that, that's probably maybe a better or worse, I don't know, introduction than, than something reading off a piece of paper. What a great, uh, yeah, thank you. I, I love that, um, uh, that introduction. I think that's, that's great. And it, I think it points to something that maybe is relevant even in this conversation, uh, and the, this topic, um, because I think what, from what you said, the very important thing for me is about um, being, being curious about the harmony in many things, right? And, um, and I've learned so much. I have gained so much insight when I could focus and look to the harmony in things rather than which of these things is right and which one is wrong. There's two of them here and they seem to conflict with each other. And so I'm going to get to the bottom of it and determine which is right. And then I'll, I'll take a vote. That one will be it. And then I will dismiss the rest. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, so that to me is a, it's a it's essential to sort of my path and my journey and kind of yeah 
things that I've been able to see. So I'm going to pause you because we're going to you're you're running headfirst into the topic. So let's just take one step back, and, yeah. and let's maybe introduce the topic. So um, I don't even remember what the exact title was, but it, it, it's about kind of what is the connection in my mind this this webinar for me, and I'm and I'm interested to learn. I I, I know I'm going to learn stuff on this webinar, um, but it's what's the connection between you know what some people call the law of attraction and that's something that i got introduced to god many many years ago and i think a lot of people did through a book and the video called the secret that was my introduction to that world a long time ago and then this other um i guess paradigm in psychology and spirituality which um you know sydney banks introduced to the world called the three principles uh, and and you are, I guess, one one of the people who have, have got a kind of a deep understanding. Well, let me put it this way. There are people who have crossed. So I did an introduction. There are people who have crossed um, different uh, paradigms or disciplines or, uh, you know, um, communities, let's say. But you're right. A lot of people seem to go from, OK, this is the right one. No, 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 no that was wrong. Now, now, now this is the right one. No, 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 that's wrong. Now, now this is the right one. And so it's, I'm interested in talking to you because you, uh, and you kind of almost ran into this straight away. You're, you're someone who, who I don't see do that. And, and that resonates with me because um, I'm curious about that too. And what I found was, you know, I came, I was around a lot of things before I became, came across the principles, but then that revolutionized how I saw the world. But then beyond that, now with that foundational understanding i i see lots of okay well that makes sense and that makes sense and that makes sense so that's mm -hmm. what i'm hoping we're going to get out of our call today that maybe people see some connections and interactions between yeah that's two. beautiful yeah that's beautiful um because because we should be able to see right because we're all on this call. We all have a deep understanding of the three principles and the teachings of Sydney Banks. And, uh, you know, we're on this call because we're in groups and, you know, your group, which is coaching, uh, you know, from a three principles understanding. So um, that's resonated to us as truth. It's pure truth, right? It's kind of, this is when, when we been in those teachings and we can kind of explore it. It, it, it that's how it seems so how can you how can that pure truth that explains everything conflict with anything it's kind of <laughs> curious <laughs> there's something about that that sort of would make you curious right you and i i remember uh, several years ago where where you know you shared something about something you were doing before and then you know and 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 we we could see how people were saying oh yeah but don't do that anymore because now you've got the principle so don't do not do that right and we're kind of like but wait a minute but the experience the principles actually explain that <laughs> ooh, ooh, there would be nothing to be afraid of now right with the understanding of the principles you could really understand right wh wh what's going on with these other things um yeah so, so something. Let, me, let me let me just set the the scene or let me ask you a question that you're probably going to hate me for right because we're going to stick this up on YouTube. There may be people coming across this who don't know too much about the principles. Maybe they know about the law of attraction. Right. So in your mind and, and, and kind of briefly, what's your understanding? And I said, you're going to hate me, aren't you? Right. But what's your understanding of when we say the principles, a foundational truth, what do you mean by that? Yeah. Well, uh, I'll start even further back than when it was the principles to Sydney Banks original you know, teaching before it became the three principles. And so what he said then, and he had this insight that who you are, who you are is the energy of all things. God. And he said, you don't need to use that word if you don't want to, but it's just a word, right? but you are the energy of all things. He got more specific. He said, 
You are a microscopic aspect of the energy of all things. So, which would make sense because <laughs> you're certainly not. And, and, and by the way, this all gets confusing when, when you're talking because who am I talking to? This is kind of like the most important thing there, right? When I say you are, who am I talking to, right? So because we, we can be talking to you here, personal mind, physical body, right? And, and so when Sidney Banks described that more personal aspect, he said, you, you, who you are, you are microscopic aspect of the energy of all things. Now, energy is indivisible. So it kind of gets arbitrary at that point. It's your, this aspect of it, but energy is indivisible. So you actually are all the energy of all things, who you really are is God. So let's go to the principles. In the principles, um, and by the way, that's a good starting point because the three principles came later and even afterwards as he, you know, sort of gave these three principles to this statement or this realization, um, then he said, and there aren't really three principles. It's really, really one, right? So sort of back and forth between, and there's nothing wrong with this because if, 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 you know, there's not a lot to talk about if there really is this one energy, you can't really sort of talk much about it. So then within this energy of all things, he distinguished mind, which is mind is an intelligence of all things. It's, it's the, the, it is that, let's just say that. It's an intelligence, it is an infinite intelligence, a knowing. And then he described, but it's not just that it's that, but it is aware. So it's an intelligence that is aware of itself. Aware. So that's consciousness. So it's, and then, that consciousness can also focus. In focusing, that is think, thinking or thought. And thought, whatever it thinks, it becomes aware of. So there, it's infinite intelligence that can focus in any way and be aware of what it has focused on. So, and that thought comes alive within it, is create, it is creating something within it, creating whatever is thought. So that's sort of my description of what Sidney Banks uh, said. And you, and I think the relationship here is, you as an, aspect, a microscopic aspect of that, I think what becomes, we, we've got to remember, is that then this means you share in its nature. So if you are that energy of all things, you share in its nature. And the three principles in Sidney Banks teaching is an exploration, an inquiry into what is our true nature. So you share in its nature, you are made in its image. An image is a true reflection, right? So other words that could be used when you say the energy of all things, the, you know, that you would call God is a, a, another word that could be used for that is the creator, right? And we've heard and you could read that, you know, in the Bible and stuff, well, you were made in the image of the creator. Who you are now as a microscopic aspect of the creator is you are a thought in God's mind. So this becomes the who you think you are is imagined by the creator. It is 
thought by the creator. That is how you've become manifest. That is how you've become distinct. And you are made in the image of the creator. You share in its nature. And what's kind of cool about human beings <laughs> is we, so we also share. We are also creators. And this goes to Sidney Banks' teaching too, where this idea that you what you experience in your reality is what you think. Right? So as the teaching went on, it's like all you ever experience is thought. Well, this would make us like the creator. Would make us like that. It's a consciousness that thinks. And that is what creation is, is the imagination of God. You are made in the image of the creator. Y you are experiencing your own reality. There is nothing that you experience that is not thought. And, you, and as you think, that thought comes to life in the consciousness, your personal consciousness within your personal mind. And that is where your entire uh, reality uh, is. So, yeah, I'll kind of pause in there. That was... <laughs> so, so thank you for, for, for that. And then, and then now I guess we go into, well, well then what is the law of attraction? Because there might be people in this group who are, are knowledgeable and, and have an understanding of the principles, but may not of the law of attraction. I don't want to assume that people know what both yeah. things are. So how would you describe then the, the law of attraction? Yeah. So unfortunately, with the law of attraction, a lot of people will uh, have heard already a lot about it, at least with the three principles and the teachings of Sidney Banks, you can sort of get started and explain to people what it is and sort of contain it because you can stay precise to the teaching because they've never heard of it anyway. So then as you describe exactly what Sidney Banks said, then you can be very precise to the teaching. Um, unlike law of attraction, so law of attraction is rampant. It is out there, right? When I, I'll tell you what law of attraction is. It's, it's, this will be so boring. You won't believe you even came to a webinar to even talk about this because <laughs> the law of attraction when you go to, so what is it? That which is like unto itself is drawn. There you go. That's the law of attraction. The law of attraction says that which is like unto itself is drawn. And like what Sidney Banks taught. This is universal, always true, never not true, and always operating whether you know it or not, whether you have any awareness of it or not. And it is an impersonal law. And it would really be a law of energy is really a law of energy. But when I say it's a law of energy, I'm now saying it's relevant to all things because Sidney Banks distinguished the energy of all things is God. And so then there is a law that operates and it is the law of attraction. And that which is like unto itself is drawn is the law. And the way that that law works is consistent and invariable. And it doesn't matter whether you understand it or not, it will operate. And so it's kind of like, so you don't need to learn it. You don't need to study it. There's none of that's important. It's kind of like that you come onto this planet and then there is a law of gravity 
and they don't, don't even teach it in school because it's not really worth teaching, um, your life will teach you because the law operates consistently. It never alters or varies. And as a result of that, you can kind of figure it out. That's how the law of gravity works. And now there's a lot of good similarity in this. It's such a simple sort of truth. Now, if you read the books, if you get into the secret and you get these teachers who teach the law of attraction, right away you kind of know something is off when they talk about how to use the law of attraction. How can you use the law of attraction to build your business, to do this or that? And so right away, there's something ridiculous in the statement. A universal law, seriously, you're going to use this? <laughs> so uh, how will you use gravity to get more clients? How will you, you know, really? Um, so there's, there's like the principles, this is the sort of a resonance in there. There is only something here for you to understand. There is nothing here for you to use. It's just something for you to understand. And from that understanding, what you would do as your understanding deepens is that you will find yourself uh, more effective in the living of your life. And this is what happens with an understanding of the principles. As we come to understand the three principles, people you, you get more effective in the living of their life. Like they used to think, you know, oh, I used to think that I had a lot of work and my boss was a real jerk and it was causing me all this stress. And then when I understood the principles, I realized, oh my God, that cannot be. As you start to understand the principles, you start to see there is nothing out there that can create an experience within me. And, you know, Sydney Banks said is, it's all thought, right? It's all thought. By the way, that's a great statement. And that also kind of links with, and it will have a harmony with law of attraction. If it's all thought, then understanding a law that operates with, when he says it's all thought, he means it's all energy. It's all a formless energy at play. So if that's true, it would be useful to understand if there's any laws related to that energy. If there's any way that that energy operates, that would be useful to understand. So I, I really want to open this up to questions. So if anyone's got any questions, please leave them in the chat box. It's it's far more interesting than, um, you know, than, than just the two of us talking. Uh, I, I'd love to open that up, but but I'll I'll kind of jump in with one to to get us going at least. And you know, this I guess applies to both the principles and to law of attraction as the way you've described it, and you've kind of answered it a little bit. But you know, what's what's the purpose, right? Because some people might be hearing this and going, well, my life's a bit, you know, rubbish. It, it, it's not great. So are you just telling me, well, that's just the way it is. God's imagined me having a rubbish life. And the law of attraction means that, well, I'm attracting these things, but there's nothing to do. Um, because people are always looking for something to do. Now, now, you've also said we become more effective. So how, how, how can yeah. we become more effective without doing if, if we're living in circumstances that we might not really uh, feel our ideal or what we'd really want? So this is a great question because this now gets to um, uh, the creator, right? Has created, imagined, and including you. Everything the creator has created is... is the, the God and the universe and what is imagined is, we say it's eternal and infinite, eternal and infinite. This implies expanding, right? The, the, uh, in other words, it must be expanding and becoming more, right? And so um, that energy that lives you wants 
only your thriving. So it lives through you in thriving. It expresses life. It expresses itself through you for more expression. So, and that, by the way, is what becomes expansion of what is created. What, what we're doing in, 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 when we say we create our own reality, and by the way, that's kind of like, you know, you go to my personal website, the Dominic Scafidi one, right? And it'll say, you create your own reality, right? In three principles language, uh, by the way, in three principles language, um, they'll use that too, right? Judith Sedgman, I'm doing an apprentice uh, practitioner uh, training. And she says, you are the thinker of your own thoughts. You are the creator of your own reality, right? George... Uh, Pransky has said that too. It's you, you, you thought is the only creator of your, of your reality. Um, Jack Pransky, I love, had, had this line is, um, you get what you think. You get what you think, which by the way, parallels very closely to Abraham Hicks. You get what you think about whether you want it or not, right? So Jack Pransky, in a very quick summary of the principle, says, you get what you think. Abraham Hicks says, you get what you think about whether you want it or not. Abraham Hicks added something there, which goes to your question about why am I in such crap circumstances? Why don't I have the money that I want? Why do I struggle in my business, right? because you get what you think about whether you want it or not. You are the creator of your own reality. And so when I put this on my website and in, you know, I have this program called Deliberate Creator and people, you know, we do monthly stuff, but when we get together, I'll say, well, okay, so you, you're the creator of your own reality. We're not gonna cover that here. We don't, I can't teach that because I'm not that good, right? So I can't teach. Uh, you're creating your own reality because you're doing it already. That's just the way that it works. So the only thing we're doing, if we're doing what, you know, what I'm calling deliberate creator, is all we're doing is exploring how is that so? How do we understand more and explore more? how it is that you are always creating your own reality that's never turned off that is all always always going on from a deeper and deeper understanding of that you would do that more deliberately you would do that more intentionally you would be more conscious in what you are creating but what you're never going to turn off is the fact that you are the own, you are the creator of your own reality because you are the thinker of your own thoughts and you will never experience anything you do not think and there is not one thing that you are experiencing that you are not thinking <laughs> those two are indivisible right so when sydney banks said it's all thought right it is all thought so there is thought there. If you are having an experience and it's an experience of scarcity or an experience of struggle or the relationship isn't going well, that's all being created. So something's just landing for me there in, in, in kind of the way I do the work that I do um, and, and how I have my understanding of the principles, which may be helpful and I'll share that and then we'll, we'll get into some questions. So my own experience of um, kind of diving into the principles now what for nearly nearly a decade <clears throat> has been the deeper that I understand something that's so simple, right? Something so simple. We are experiencing our life experiences, basically thought moment to moment, you know, rising in a consciousness, being powered by this infinite intelligence, right? But for short, you're feeling, you're thinking moment to moment. We've heard that. And the deeper that I've seen that truth, that law, that whatever, 
what it's done and 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 uh you know one of my mentors has been uh, dr keith blevins for many years and, and he's re really helped me see this is that seeing how it works takes stuff off my mind right so i used to have an awful lot of thinking about uh stuff right like uh people that had upset me or what, what i used to think that well that person has upset me and i would think about that or um you know not being as successful as other i'd comp compare myself well i'm not as successful as him or her or uh, well, I am more successful than him and I'd look down on that person or whatever. And I was living in this thought created reality that I didn't realize was thought created. Now, understanding that I was living in a thought created reality actually helped my mind quieten down from a lot of these thoughts. All right. And I see this with my clients. I, you know, I see this with other people in this community. The understanding of the principles in and of itself takes stuff off our mind. And so what I have experienced in terms of what's left is, is all this stuff that I was trying to use the law of attraction for or use all these other things for to get to. Like, I'll give you an example. Um, the lady who wrote the law of attraction, she wrote this other book and it was all about gratitude. And I would write my gratitude journal every day for years. And I was like, I need to feel grateful. But I didn't really feel grateful. I had all this thought and 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 uh, in insecurity and then on top of that i was kind of like trying to think other thoughts to be good and and they were very superficial but when i came across the principles what happened is a lot of that that insecurity started to fall away and what what arose out of that w was genuine gratitude and and what i'm hearing and what you're saying dominic is almost like the law of attraction is more of a barometer for my understanding of the principles. Mm. Right? That's how, what I'm hearing in what you're saying. And a nice way to look at it. There's, there's in a way a feedback loop happening from being conscious. A couple of things to say. Um, it takes thinking off your mind because thinking is so irrelevant. Thinking is a manifestation. So this is such a misunderstanding in law of attraction, right? Even, even, in, even in the way you get what you think about like that. Um, what Sidney Banks did when he described thought with a capital T is so powerful. Thought with a capital T is a formless energy. Um, a Abraham Hicks, you, you, many of you, I think, have in your attempt to try to describe three principles, how many of you gotten yourself wrapped around the axle talking to people about thought? No, not thought. I mean thought. I don't mean your thinking. I mean thought. Like, and you, so you're just going nuts with this, right? So unfortunate that the same word got used, right? But he put a capital T and he calls this by, you know, this uh, formless energy. Well, what I'm grateful for is at least where Abraham Hicks refers to this. So then they change, they use the word vibration. So if you take a formless energy, an energy vibrates. Well, this is kind of cool because now we can't, at least we can't confuse it because <laughs> a vibration is going to be for sure very different than thinking, right? The thoughts that I'm thinking. At least I'm not going to get this confused. So in the language of law of attraction and specifically in the way that Abraham Hicks teaches it, vibration is used that word is equivalent to Sidney Banks talking about thought as the creator and I wanted to bring it up because what, what we're doing and when you said I got busy with all this thinking like you know I'm trying to create things and so I'm trying to manage my thinking and doing all that well it's too late <laughs> your thinking is not creating a thing your thinking is the manifestation of the vibration you are in. 
those thoughts that come are manifestation. They are already the expression of this energy. So people attempting to, you know, use law of attraction, figuring they can do it with their mind. I'm going to start thinking positive and I need to think good thoughts because I'll only create good things. The universe does not hear what you say. The universe doesn't even understand what you're saying. The universe is not speaking in English or any other language. The universe is only responding to your vibration. It is only a responding to your vibration. And that which is like unto itself is drawn. There is no, and this will go with three principles too, there is no assertion in this universe. There is no assertion. It is a universe only of attraction. If this was a universe of assertion, then things could happen to you that you do not think. You could experience things that you are not the source of. You could have experiences that did not arise from within you, from the energy within you. That's what would happen in a universe of assertion. You'd be living your life and all of a sudden you'd be hit with this and hit with that and hit with this other thing. And it's like, my God, look what's going on here, right? <laughs> so in a universe of attraction, there is not one experience that you can have that does not arise within you from the energy that you are. It's a universe only of attraction. And that's another important thing that, and parallel, I'd say, in the teachings. Let's get, this is fascinating, and I'm also aware of time. So let, let's get into some of the questions. So, so Rick, uh, hi, Rick, he's, he's got a question. How does setting an intention work in relation to 3P and law of attraction? So I'm getting what I intend all of the time. Is that how oh, that works? see that that that's a great question, Rick. And it's a perfect question writing off of what I just said, right? Because notice that and this is what happens with the law of attraction teachings when you read the, the secret and you read these other books. Um, it, it, it it's like so the intention. So I just think it right. So I'm intending to have a thriving coaching practice. I'm intending that I want to have a lot of money. Do, can you see already that you're in form, in thought? Whatever we're talking about as intention cannot be this. This is not because the law of attraction will not respond to this. This is already a manifestation of. Uh, so it's already a thought and you are not attracting that. You are attracting from energy from. And so that's not the intention that is bringing anything to you, this thing that you conjured from your finite thinking. Because to be honest with you, here's the part about your intention. When you intend to anything, you are really mostly, and I'm saying when you intend it from your personal mind and your personal thinking, mostly what you're doing is compensating for some kind of insecurity, fear, power sense of powerlessness which isn't even true about who you are it is untrue of your true nature but certainly from the personal mind look look at me i i i need more money i can i'm going to set an intention to have more money and to right what what is that what notice the manifestation of this thought this thought for more money has the energy within it of scarcity. That which is like unto itself is drawn. Setting these intentions, writing them down, posting them up and reading them over and over and over again, right? Which is what a lot of that kind of teaching says, will just keep you in the vibration of the scarcity from which this intention arose. It is insecurity and you are reinforcing that. And now life keeps showing you. And, you know, life keeps showing you this not to be unfair, right? 
this is terrible. Why would the universe do this, right? <laughs> Be because the universe continues to show you what you're thinking. The, the universe continues to show you your state of being. By the way, state of being uh, becomes another word that points to a formless a state of being expresses into form you, you know state of being as joyful loving peaceful will manifest through you move you into words and actions that are then an expression of that state of being right? so i hope, hope that was helpful rick <clears throat> uh, yeah we got a thumbs up there so so jan is asking a great question so what is fresh thought and how does that arise if we're always only ever experiencing our own thinking? Yeah. Well, where did the thoughts come from and where do new thoughts come from? Right. So, uh, by the way, Abraham's teaching, which has a similarity, uh, um, you know, when I just described before and I said, Sidney Banks said, you're the energy of all things. And then he says, you're a microscopic aspect of the energy of all things. So here's here's the language that Abraham Hicks uses. Who you are is pure source energy consciousness. Who you are is pure source energy consciousness. To me, that seems like a good parallel. The energy of all things. Who you are is pure source energy consciousness. We've got parallel. And a part of you is focused into this physical existence. So who you are is pure source energy consciousness. And a part of you is focused into this physical existence while the greater part of you remains non-physically focused. The tiniest part of you is actually focused here into this physical existence. Sidney Banks said, who you are is the energy of all things and a microscopic aspect of you is this personal you that you know yourself as. So there's a lot of parallels in that, a lot of harmony in the way that teaching goes. And so now when you think about this question about thought and fresh thought, <laughs> where this thought comes is the same place that I mean, Sid described this spiritual energy, formless energy expresses into form. It go and it only goes in one direction, by the way, right? It only happens from formless to form, from formless to form. And what Sidney Banks distinguished was via thought moves from formless into form first via thought. Abraham says, that that truth of you, which is an energy, you are receiving, interpreting that energy into thought first. So same thing. It's, it is received by you. And th this is the part that's the, the difference is the way I use the word, it is received by you. Fresh thinking completely different than manifested thought and knowledge which you have gathered in your life which is all around and the sort of things that you've learned which up until now are the form of the experience that you are living and then to attempt to play with that thinking to try to create something or get get to some new place. There is no creation that can happen in the manifested world. That which has been created cannot create. Creation cannot happen in the material, in an expressed world. There's only one creator, Sid said. There's only one creator. <laughs> and that only one creator is thought, that vibration, that energy is the only creator there is. So fresh thought is sourced in that. And it is flowing to you all the time, flowing to you all the time. The question is, are you listening? Or are you listening to yourself? Are you receiving? Are you open to receiving? 
Or are you too busy right now because you're listening to yourself? Because you've got things to do and there's problems here. Plus, not enough money and you need to do some, right? So then you're listening to yourself and no longer fresh thinking. You're just churning around in the created stuff that you've already got. All right, we got a smile there. So I think that that answered Jan's question. Now, Marina's got a, a, a longer question. Uh, so let's let's get to this. I studied Abraham Hicks extensively. And my understanding is that when we keep our vibration high or live in joy and go with the flow, things align the way you have desired them to be. Because we are not obstructing uh for them to drop in. I like the AH, uh, Abraham Hicks analogy, you order a package and once the postman comes, there is no one to open the door. And I'm curious if the two of you would agree that the three Ps and law of attraction are basically the same thing going via a different approach. I'll, I'll let you answer that first. Yeah, I want to clear up something about vibration, high vibration and maintaining high vibration, like all that kind of stuff, right? Um, this this is also uh, uh, and by the way this is even a misunderstanding of Abraham's teachings. Uh, um, it was a few months ago, uh, you know, in one of the live streams as I was listening in, where they said, you know, because they've been channeling since 1985, right? It's been going on forever. But they 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 said this is like the most common misunderstanding. It's a misunderstanding of people who have followed them for years and all of that. This idea of vibration, maintaining my vibration, maintaining a high vibration, like all of that. That would be contradictory to three principles for sure, if that was the teaching. And it isn't. Right. So what, what, what is it? The teaching more parallels what what uh, Sid said, which really, if you drop personal thinking, you rest in this infinite. Right. So, what, OK, so but what do I do? How do I do that? You know, we always get asked that, right? If you've been working with people around three principles, well, how do I do that? How do I get to a quiet mind? And if you, you know, the, the these metaphors that are there, well, you don't really do anything. The quiet mind is the innate, is the innate state. The only thing you're doing is you keep churning it, right? You keep spinning it, you keep churning. So once you aren't doing that, you return to an eight state. So Abraham's uh, complete similarity. So first of all, everything that you want, everything that you want is in this aligned, high vibrational state, right? But let, let, let's look at why that is. First of all, right, because that is the state when you are most in harmony with this energy that is who you really are. In other words, in that high vibrational state, you are most calibrated, tuned into the truth of you and your true nature. That's the energy. So it's that energy that lives you, lights you up. The way we've been describing this, when people say God, they'll say that's the energy of love. It's joy, it's bliss, it's peace. All these words that they've used to describe what this energy is of mind, of infinite intelligence, pure source energy, they are using words which are of very high frequency energy. Right? Then there's us focused here. And what happens from the finite perspective, as I think a thought, hmm, I wonder if this is going to work out for me. You know, I'm not really good at this stuff. And so this is going to be hard to do. So notice my thinking coming in about something I want to do. What happens in that moment is I'm no longer thinking as God. These thoughts that I have are my own, right? So I'm now in interference. So now there's this interference of my thinking and my perspective of what I'm looking at. 
and I'm starting to think about it from this finite perspective. When you think a thought, when you think a thought, you activate that energy within you. So now I activate an energy of pessimism, hopelessness, maybe some worry. So this energy is now activated in me. But the truth of me, what's living me, breathing me, is a very high vibrational energy. It is joy, peace, clarity, infinite intelligence is the truth of me. That is the truth that is flowing. And now I activate this from my focus of attention. I activate doubt, pessimism. When three principles says you are feeling your thinking, I used to get confused because I was like, but wait a minute, didn't you just say that thought was neutral? So I'm feeling my thinking, but thinking, I thought you said thoughts neutral. I thought, you know, right? So what do you mean I'm feeling my thinking? Well, I think the explanation is better when we understand it in these energies, because there's a truth of you that never leaves you, or you would stop breathing. <laughs> that is the truth that lives you. And then there is your focus in this moment. 3P would say you're thinking in this moment. So your focus in this moment. And as your focus in this moment moves to a thought of doubt or pessimism or whatever, your vibration matches. You are activating personally that vibration. And what you feel when we say you feel your thinking, the more accurate statement would be that what you are feeling is the harmony or disharmony with who you really are. What you are feeling is the level of harmony and disharmony with the truth of you and your true nature. If you were simply thinking as God thinks, how you would feel with thoughts expressed from love and joy and clarity and confidence and power and th th as those thoughts, what you would feel would be those feelings. There would be l very l m a an incredible harmony between how God sees this and how you see this. <laughs> see, here you are, you have this uh, business and you're trying to build this business and oh my God, it's so hard, it's so complicated. Right away, that should tell you, you are using your little mind. <laughs> Because infinite intelligence looks at your business and kind of thinks, what's the big deal? I am the creator of the universe. And you're trying to build a business to earn enough money to hit a whatever thing you want to hit. It's like, I already know how to do it. Quiet down and listen. <laughs> and if you would... <laughs> then the thoughts of source would come in. But those thoughts are thoughts of uh, uh, optimism, thoughts of hopefulness, thoughts that would feel like enthusiasm and inspiration and they'd be joyful. And so that's what would happen there. So the question, do I need to hold a high vibration? Um, no, n no, a high vibration is your true nature. So uh, we have we use this in three principles too, where we talk about a you know beach ball on the surface of the water or something that that that's like your true nature. But if you think about it, like if you add personal thinking, if you imagine a beach ball and you put personal thinking on top and you weigh it down, it would go underneath the water. Your level of consciousness, Sid, Sid's words, right? Your level of consciousness would lower right? Like that. And then we say, well, how do I go to a higher level of consciousness? Equivalent, by the way, to the high vibration that that uh, Abraham Hicks talks about. How do I move to a higher level of consciousness? <laughs> well, what are you talking about? A high, a high level of consciousness is your true nature. Were it not for all these thoughts you're pounding on top of this beach ball. <laughs> these thoughts you insist on thinking. 
and and won't let go of and will not drop well as long as you hold those thoughts and it will weigh you down and so that's why the sort of the freedom we get sometimes in an understanding of the 3p which is drop this stuff there's nothing to think about and as you drop it what happens the level of consciousness rises so do i have to hold myself in high vibration here's the deal you are not the one that moves your level of consciousness up that's a done deal it was a gift <laughs> it's a gift you don't earn that because you are so good at raising your vibration compared to those other suckers who can't and haven't figured it out right this is a gift and it is given equally to all <laughs> so the only thing you ever do is lower your vibration with your attention and interest and focus moving around and not being aware of how you feel. You're not conscious of how you feel because wisdom is being communicated via that feeling. That feeling is telling you in every moment what your thinking is doing relative to that truth of your true nature and what is truth and truth of who you really are. I, I hope that answers the question, Marina. We don't have very many minutes left, so I'll, I'll give a, a very short version. Um, I, I have a maybe a slightly different view. I, I spent a long time looking at what makes the principles different because I see a lot of conversations about like well the, you know Sid said saw nothing new it was all the same uh, and and that's true from one perspective and and I've also spent some time well, well what was there anything different is there something unique about the principles or the way it's expressed and and I won't be able to explain that in three minutes but but I think there also is so it's kind of yes and no uh, which may be a cop-out answer but I but I do feel that there was something about what Sid expressed in the way he expressed, which was pointing to something that everyone's been pointing to. The truth is the truth. That's not new or different or unique. Um, but th there was something about that. And what I feel is, I think, maybe on the same page as you, Dominic, that, uh, you know, truth is truth. So that, you know, if we look for that, then then that then you know that's always going to be true now are they the same thing i don't think they are but they're pointing to the same thing that's that's kind of my my answer um and ultimately i think you know everyone's on this journey for themselves what i think today is probably going to be different in a year's time or 10 years time or 20 years time and that's really cool and um you know, there's to to me there's 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 not a lot of dogma in some people think there is, but to me there's not a lot of dogma in this community, and I certainly enjoy exploring the principles for myself. And recently, when I spoke to um, Elsie, I was like still a bit like I want to do this right, and she goes, I said, "What well, what are we going to do when when you, when you guys pass on and retire?" And you know, and she goes, she learned more about the principles after Sid passed away than when he was alive because she was always deferring to him as opposed to looking towards source looking towards wisdom looking towards intelligence which i which i loved so um thank you for that dominic i hope that answers your question marina uh, i've learned a lot from our webinar today um and and it's helped me connect a few things um so thank you as always for being so generous and offering your time with us today and um uh, I'm, I'm going to imagine that you're going to say uh, that because you're always so generous with your time that if anyone's got any questions that we didn't get around to that either in your group or my group, I mean, you're, you're yes. everywhere. You seem to be, uh, uh, you know, omnipresent on social media uh, that you're, 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 you're able to connect with people and, and, and answer any questions that we didn't get around to. Yeah, absolutely. Just reach out and uh, for sure able to have a conversation. Yeah. Thanks, Ankush. This has been uh, wonderful to have that. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful.